Stocks sliding Thursday as big name tech stocks like Apple get unloaded. Let's get a technical view of the market from Terrence Gabriel. He's Stocks Buzz Analyst at Thomson Reuters. Good afternoon and welcome back, Terrence. So Apple, I notice it's down 10% from its peak hit on January 26th of $143 a share. When the generals are retreating like Apple, what does it mean for the overall market, say the NASDAQ or, or the S&P? Yes, well, usually it's it's uh, it's not a good sign uh, when you have a, a stock uh, as a uh, key position that Apple is in, the largest capitalized stock in the U.S. stock market. So uh, it's very important how, how Apple uh, behaves is is going to be significant for these indices uh, that it is such a big part of. Uh, one of the things we noticed was that the Na the the Apple relative to the Nasdaq 100 ratio. Uh, had recently gotten up to a 30-year or so resistance line. And uh, that was a point at which we sort of ha had to see whether Apple was going to sort of break out to the upside relative to the NASDAQ and uh, continue its sort of uninterrupted advance. Or it could also signal a point where it would run into trouble on a relative basis. And as you said, interestingly enough, Apple's down about 10% since hitting that line in late January, whereas the NASDAQ 100 is only down about 2% or so from its recent high. However, uh, given the breakdown that we're seeing in that relationship of Apple relative to the NASDAQ 100, uh, it looks like it's going to be more and more difficult for the NASDAQ to sort of defy uh, Apple weakness in the event it intensifies, uh, given what we've seen in the past when Apple has had these periods where it has sold off significantly. You say it's going to be hard for NASDAQ to defy. Is it NASDAQ 100 or by extension the NASDAQ itself if Apple keeps falling? Well, uh, certainly the NASDAQ 100, the, the, the largest one, 100 largest not capitalized uh, stocks in the NASDAQ and the broader NASDAQ, which includes many, many smaller stocks, of course. Uh, but ultimately, Apple is a, is a huge weight uh, and is having the biggest impact on those indices. So if Apple is going to undergo further pressure, uh, the likelihood is, is that these indices are going to feel that weight. And the indices will catch up to what Apple's drop? Or, well, sir, certainly they will uh, experience a, a more significant period of weakness uh, in the event we see Apple fall, uh, something like it fell last September, which was more than 20%. So uh, it, the, the, it certainly looks as if, given the break we're seeing in Apple relative to the NASDAQ 100, that overall uh, the NASDAQ indices are going are gonna to be in for some trouble here unless Apple can reverse pretty quickly. And lastly, Terrence, um, is the market, in your view, looking at all the indicators that you do, is it overheated at this point? And if so, is there a big correction to come? Well, when we, we look at a lot of indicators, we see that they are uh, both, say, market breadth indicators, market internal measures, momentum oscillators. Uh, they are very overheated. Uh, some of the market uh, sort of breadth momentum measures I look at recently on the NASDAQ hit an all-time high. Uh, the uh, advanced decline line on the New York Stock Exchange, all-time highs. They're starting, however, to sort of, it looks like kind of roll over, at least in the short term that's happened. It's a question of whether or not it becomes a more sustained decline. But certainly from these kinds of overheated levels, the market becomes very vulnerable to some kind of sellback uh, of some degree. Now, certainly we see a lot of complacency in this market, uh, a sort of excessive bullishness, uh, an expectation is just going to keep rising. Uh, but uh, certainly with the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield hitting its highest level since February of 2020, uh, it seems to sort of uh, bring risk back into the market suddenly. And uh, in a, in, it is from these kinds of conditions that uh, the vulnerability then can lead to something uh, a bit more than just uh, a sudden 3 to 5 percent pullback. Uh, so uh, the potential would be for something much greater. Uh, in the event that we start to see some important support levels uh, start to give way. So, for example, if the S&P 500 were to break 36.94, it would come below its late January trough. And that would be the first time since actually the advance began in March of 2020 that you would have seen one of the lows violated. So the index has been making higher lows 
and higher highs since March 2020. But if we come back under 3694, we would then sort of end that pattern and we would see, therefore, the market starting to roll over. So it's watching those kinds of levels that's very important. I don't know. We'll keep an eye on S&P 3694. Thanks a lot, Terrence. Our thanks to Terrence Gabriel of Thomson Reuters Stocks Buzz. I'm Fred Katayama in New York. This is Reuters.